Hi, I'm Nick, and today I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about RRSPs. RRSP stands for Registered Retirement Savings Plans. It was designed to encourage Canadians and Canadian residents to save for retirement. There are two main benefits of the RRSP. Number one is that it lets you defer tax to a future year. And number two, it lets, it lets your investments grow tax-free within the account. Let's take a look at the first benefit, deferring tax to a future year. The idea with an RRSP is that while you're contributing to the RRSP, you'll be working and in a higher tax bracket compared to when you retire. Therefore, you'll realize the savings now and pay tax at a lower tax rate when you take out your contributions upon retirement. Now you are only taxed on the amount of the withdrawal from the RRSP and any contributions you make to the RRSP reduces your taxable income in that year. The idea is that you can save money by deferring tax. You contribute now and pay tax later. Let's look at an example. So let's say taxpayer earns $60,000 and they're in a tax bracket of 25%. They would be taxed $15,000 on that income. Now if you add in an RRSP contribution of $10,000, it would lower their taxable income by that amount. The tax that they would be charged would be reduced by $2,500. Furthermore, when they decide to take out that $10,000 from their RRSP, we're going to pretend that they're at a lower tax rate. So we'll say 15%. When they take that money out, it'll be taxed at that 15% rate, which is $1,500. So therefore, the tax deferral savings is about $1,000. So one tax strategy that some people do is they defer their RRSP deductions. You don't necessarily have to take that RRSP deduction in the year in which you made the contribution. For example, if I made contributions to my RRSP in 2019, I don't have to apply my deduction on my 2019 taxes. If I know that in 2020, I'm gonna make a substantial amount more and therefore my tax will be more, I can wait until 2020 to apply my RRSP deductions and therefore lowering my taxable income. Now to have eligible contributions, you have to make a contribution to your RRSP in that calendar year or in the first 60 days of the next year. So for example, tax year 2019, RRSP contributions have to be made in 2019 or in the first 60 days of 2020. The second benefit is that your investments grow tax-free. Now you can have really anything you want in your RRSP, but for this example, we'll use stocks. If you purchase a stock at $5 a share, and within the year you earn dividend income, and at the end of the year, that stock was worth, let's say $15, you decide to sell that stock. Well, that $10 capital gain plus those dividends are not taxed so long as they're in the RRSP. Again, you're only taxed on the amount that you withdraw from the RRSP. This really allows investors to save a lot of money and really harness the power of compound interest and time within their RRSP account. It's also a good idea to get started as soon as you can to really realize exponential growth within your account. Now that we've discussed some of the benefits, let's get into the details. Who can apply for an RRSP? Well, in order to be able to contribute to an RRSP, you have to have earned income in Canada the prior year. Contribution room is calculated by 18% of your prior year's earned income up to a maximum amount. In 2019, that maximum amount was 26,500. So for example, if I earned $100,000 in 2018, my 2019 contribution limit would be $18,000. Now to know for certain what your contribution room is, the CRA hands out what's called a notice of assessment. Your contribution room will be available on that notice. You get that either in the mail or online via your CRA My Account. If you don't have access to either of those, you can always call the CRA and ask. There is no age restriction on the RSP. So as long as you have that contribution room, you can open an account. Now, contrary to popular belief, 
you don't have to wait until retirement to take money out of your RRSP. No matter what age you are, you can take money out and you will be withheld tax at a certain percentage based on the amount that you withdraw. The catch is, however, the amount that you take out bites into your contribution room. And unlike the TFSA, you cannot regain that contribution room back. So once you take that money out, you lose that contribution space. So it's a good idea to keep the money in and let it gain compound interest over time until you absolutely have to take it out. Now Canada does provide two options to take money out of your RRSP without losing that contribution room. Those are the Home Buyers Plan and the Lifelong Learning Plan. The Home Buyers Plan allows Canadians to take money out of the RRSP to buy or build a home. Now you can withdraw up to $35,000 from your RRSP and you have up to 15 years to pay back that money into your account. It's essentially like giving a loan to yourself. The lifelong learning plan is very similar. However, it's not for buying a home, it's for furthering your education. You can withdraw up to $20,000 of your RRSP and you have up to 10 years to repay that money. Like we said earlier, there's no age limit in which you can withdraw from your RRSP. However, by age 71, your RRSP becomes what's called a RIF, and then Canada forces you to take regular withdrawals from your account. Okay, and that is everything you need to know about RRSPs. Do you own an RRSP? Why or why not? Let me know in the comments below. Also, if you found this video valuable, be sure to give it a thumbs up. That's all for me for today. I will see you on the flip side. Happy taxing.